Have you bought a caravan and you're not too sure what you need to pick it up from the dealership? We're gonna run you through some of the ins and outs and hopefully answer some of the questions you might have so you can start touring and seeing Australia. Hi, I'm Andrew. And I'm Bryony, and we own and operate Accelerate Off-Grid Touring Solutions in Maroochydore. Andrew's been an auto electrician for over... 20 something, too long years. And over the last five years, our business has morphed from being a standard auto electrical workshop into your total off-grid touring solutions one-stop shop. So touring for us is your tow vehicle um, and your dual batteries in the vehicle and your towing setup, as well as your caravan or camper trailer. So most people walk into us and they go, I've been told I need an electronic brake controller yep. by the dealership and that's it. So what is an electronic brake controller? Why do they need it? Yeah, okay, so that's probably a really good place to start. Um, any ca any trailer over 750 kilos in, I'm pretty sure Australia, definitely Queensland, um, needs to have electric brakes and that needs to be controlled f from the driver's seat. So there's a couple of major brands, a shameless plug here, Red Arc Tow Pro and a few others. They supply an in-car brake controller and what that does is when you put the brakes in the car, it applies the brakes to the caravan at the same time proportionally to slow the van down as much as the car so the car's not taking the load of braking. So some customers might come in after the electronic brake controller and ask about an Anderson plug. It's something that we recommend to get done at the same time. Andrew, what is an Anderson plug? Why do we recommend it and what does it do? So an Anderson plug is just a large pair of wires that come down from your start battery, hopefully via an isolator and all they do is charge the battery in the caravan. So it's just two heavy wires from the star battery running the full length of the vehicle to a little gray plug at the rear that'll plug into the front of your caravan. And what does it charge in your caravan or run in your caravan? Batteries in the caravan. So most vans now have some sort of battery system and um, while you're driving along, it will charge those batteries. And why are we not running that through a 12 pin plug? That's a really common question. Yeah, because, well, things like this, uh, 400 amps of lithium in here can charge, there's two DC DC chargers, this will charge 90 amps. Your pin on your 12 pin plug is flat out carrying 15. So whenever you want to have any sort of decent charge going into your batteries, you need an Anderson plug, 100%. And if I've got AGM versus lithium batteries in my caravan, what's... Yeah, well an AGM battery won't take as much current, so they'll charge slower. So definitely you can get away with smaller cabling on your Anderson plug with AGMs. But uh, get a big one because the natural progression is to move from AGMs to lithiums. If you get it set up in the first place, you're good once you put bigger batteries in your van. So the other thing people ask about is a Red Anderson plug for ESC or electronic stability control. Yep. What, what do we need? Why do we need it? So most vans now, I think after 2019, came out with um, ESC. You'll see it written on the vans in a sticker. There's, either, there's two brands, Alco or Dexter. Um, and that is full stability control. Basically, if it, it's built into the van, if it feels the van wobbling down the street, it will apply the brakes accordingly. And that red Anderson plug it come, again comes from your sta start battery and it actually powers up the box that controls the brakes. So it's just another set of wires coming from your start battery through a different color Anderson plug, just to differentiate the two, that powers up the module that stops your van from shaking. So that whole thing you see of them shaking down the road, it's to stop that. And so if my caravan has that, do I have to have it in my car? Do I have to have it plugged on or can we just bypass it and ignore it? No, it's brakes. You have to control. have it, yeah. Yes. So it's something that's not an option. I think you'd find you'd be uninsured, unroadworthy, un-everything if, cool. if it, stability was there and not working. So can we put that ESC through the 12-pin plug? Do some people, manufacturers do Some that? manufacturers do, yes. Um, and if so, that's, that's fine. Uh, as part of manufacturing, ESC do doesn't actually carry the current that a charging system does. So the 12-pin plug will handle it. 12-pin plugs notoriously have bad connections. So we would always recommend moving to an Ando. But for simplicity's sake, some manufacturers do go a 12-pin. And so the different colors in the Anderson plug is simply so you can't connect them into the wrong thing. So a grey won't go into a grey, a red won't go into a red. So you always know that you're going to be connecting your ESC to your ESC and that sort of thing. Um, so on that, a 12 pin plug or a trailer plug, a seven pin plug, what is running through those plugs? 
So I, some bands come with five, some come with twelve. Sorry, some bands come with seven, some come with twelve. No one has five anymore. Five of those circuits in either a seven or twelve are just plain lights, your stop tail indicators. Um, the six wire is your electric bra brakes. Your seventh wire can either be reverse lights or fridge switch on feed, depending on your fridge. And then, so that's your standard seven. And then the extra five pins up the top, they again can be fridge, stability control, charging breakaway systems. Lot, each manufacturer is different, but that's kind of what the extra wires do. And that's why you'll never find a seven to 12 converter being seven from the car to 12 van. People are always shopping for them, you can't get them because the seven from the car to the 12, obviously there's too many feeds missing in the van. So that's, that's why that's a thing. So on that, if your caravan has a seven pin, we always recommend going a 12 pin on your car simply because you can plug the seven pin into the 12 at a later date if you change to a 12 pin or tow anything with a 12 pin. Yes. Is that correct? Yeah, so van seven, car 12, no problem. Car seven, van 12, no go. So a lot of the time when people walk in, they have got a wiring diagram for that trailer plug from their manufacturer. Every manufacturer is gonna put those last five pins generally in a different place. Um, if you don't have it, we will typically request it from the manufacturer prior to your job coming into us. Um, that sort of set up, so to do an Anderson plug, a trailer plug, an ESC, um, and a, the electronic brake controller, we package it together um, simply because, why Andrew? Because you need it, you, you really do. Like everybody goes through the progression, small van, bigger, 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 the change. Um, you get that all in one hit, it's just done. And it is cheaper to do it all, all at the same time because we're pulling cables, pulling two cables, pulling four cables, really doesn't make that much difference. So do it all at once. And on that, I would always say, Get your Sparky to pull a caravan cable as a camera cable as well. So a safety Dave cable, just pull it and leave it in there. Even if your first van doesn't come with a car with a camera, your second or third will, and or you might decide to add it later to your van. If it's in there, it's already pulled. It's like a fifteen dollar cable. It costs nothing to pull it at the same time with the rest, and you really are saving yourself a fortune down the down the track. So a bit of forward thinking. So sweet, nice segue, reverse camera for your caravan. For me, it's an absolute must when you're towing. It's like the one thing I think everybody should have. What it is, and most caravan manufacturers will do it in factory for you these days, is they'll put a um, camera on the back of your caravan. You can even get them down the sides, but the back is the must one. And it allows you to see behind your caravan and generally a lane either side of you as well. And you can have it so the camera is displayed on your screen while you're driving, so it's just extra eyes behind you for merging, for cars coming up either side of you. You can see when they're past. I don't know, to me it's a real safety must. Um, so most manufacturers are using Safety Dave. We are seeing a few different ones coming through, but Andrew, what have you got to add about them? Yeah, every, well, the term I hear all the time is a reversing camera, I don't need that because my wife's back there. I never use it when I'm going backwards and I literally spend all day moving vans around my workshop. I'm the car park Nazi at work. They are for when you're towing and you're overtaking someone or someone's overtaking you because it's a 40 an angle off the back of your van. If you can see that car back there, you're in front of them. If you can't see them, you're beside them. So that's one reason. And the second reason is just when you pull up at the lights and you know there was a car that you saw hanging around before and they vanished out of your side mirrors, you can see them in your rear, rear mirror. So it just gives you a sense of awareness that you really don't have from your mirrors, just for your distance, especially this, like we're running sort of 17 meters on this thing. And you really, if you can see the car on the screen, you know he's behind you, so you can pull over, pull in front. So the next thing on that, um, probably outside of the electrical system would be towing mirrors. Massive. They are a must have. They kill me. Legally? We get cut, you, there is a, a, an angle um, prescribed by transport of the tips of your mirrors to the back of your van. I'm not actually sure on it and I'm not going to quote it, but there is a, an angle. But again, I am the guy that moves the vans around all the time and if I get in somebody's car without mirrors, you'll watch me reverse and I'm snaking the whole way because I'm waiting for the corner of their van to appear in their mirrors. And so you turn, you turn, you turn. If it's got a big set of like clear views or MSAs or something nice like that, you just reverse in a dead straight line because you can see both the rear corners of the van at the same time. It's, it's an absolute 
must and it does my head in when I get these smaller dual cabs in with 20 foot vans and no mirrors. I, d I don't know how people deal with it. So on that you can get the clip-on mirrors that go over them um, or you can do products like Clearview or MSA so they replace your existing mirrors. Yep. Um, what's your preference? Oh definitely the, the, yeah, definitely the replacements. I think um, they both, you know, Clearview has come out with a new range. They're all whatever you like the look of is, is my answer on that one. Clip-ons, definitely better than nothing. Um, and they don't scratch your mirrors if you get a good set. So they don't do any damage to your car. Um, they're better than nothing, but a, a good set of replacement mirrors are, are absolute no-brainer. Personally have clear views, um, but- MSA is a stock. MSAs are in stock at the moment. Clear views, not so much, but yeah, both, whatever you like, we'll go. Cool, I think that about covers the towing stuff. Is there anything else people need to know or be aware of as far as towing goes? Another thing that's really cool, um, and it's cheap, it's really cheap and makes a really big difference is tire pressure monitoring. So that's something we've, we've started installing a lot, a lot of. And it really is the final thing of your pre-tow checklist. You know, you go around, you hook up your van, you check your chains, you check everything, you make sure that's all cool. If you've got either like just the Safety Dave ones or the Jayco Smart Connect ones or something like, or BM Pro Smart Connect ones or something like that, literally look at it, you know your tires are, are all within the same PSI and it actually is a really good peace of mind and saves a lot of effort in that pre-van checklist. Obviously, if you got one tire down, you know you got a leak or an old tire or something like that. So that's probably a really good one and then you can get them for like a hundred bucks. It's really good. So that'd be my top towing tips. So we're now going to move along to actually inside the caravan. These might be modifications that you can make with your manufacturer or your dealer prior to getting your caravan. If not, they're definitely ones that we can help you add after the fact. So let's start with the positive pressure system. Commonly known brands are Carafan. Tell us yep. about it, Andrew. What does it do? How does it work? Positive pressure system, they're called. Um, Carafan, Dometic, and I can't think of another one locally made in Brisbane. Um, basically, what happens when you move of any vehicle down the road or any object moving through, you get a vacuum behind it. And what historically has always happened with caravans and canopies is um, the vacuum creates sort of a, all the bull dust and everything sucks into the van. And so there's so many stories of people doing a big long trip, getting wherever they're going, opening their van, and it's completely, they call it being dusted. The van is completely full of dirt. So what there's available now is um, systems that put pr positive air pressure into the van. So what then happens, wherever those cracks in your vans were, that were before a vacuum, there is now air pushing out of the cracks. So basically, when you get there, your van's still nice and clean because there's air getting forced out of the holes rather than dust getting sucked in. So your next sort of option that you might get will be around fridges. So three-way fridge versus compressor fridge, Andrew. What are your thoughts? All right, so this is the new one and this really listen to what i say because this all day three-way fridge three-way fridges work on electric gas and 240. they're a horrible electric fridge they're a horrible battery fridge they're a good gas fridge so they use heaps and heaps of power on the battery so you can only run them off your car while you're driving but and they don't actually cool that well, but on gas, they're fantastic and they're quite efficient. They do suffer a lot though, from different temperatures in the day. So if you, you know, cold one day, hot the next, you'll find one day it'll freeze your stuff, the next day it won't be quite as cold. And so they don't have the regulation. The advantage of them is though, they just run off a gas bottle. So there's no hate on the gas fridge. It's just not quite as, efficient and not as sort of continuous temperature as a compressor fridge or a two-way fridge. Two-way fridges are brilliant. They are almost like a household fridge experience where every day, no matter what the temperature is in your kitchen, it's the same. But the problem, they use a lot of power. And what we've seen in nearly every customer that comes to us from a lithium upgrade has been sold a van with one or two solar panels, say 250, 300 watts of solar on the roof, two AGMs and a compressor fridge, and they only get three or four days camping because that fridge just is such a constant draw on their batteries. So 
If you want a compressor fridge, which is a brilliant fridge and a superior fridge, you really need to think about your battery system because we just see it all the, all the time. And people get really disappointed when they buy a seventy to $100,000 van, they paid for the good fridge, and then they're only getting two or three days in what they thought would be an off-grid fridge. So two-way fridge, 200 amps of lithium, 400 minimum of solar, must. So we do a lot of off-grid setups in caravans. That's what we do. We do quite a few systems um, a week, three or four systems a week um, in caravans. We have got so much videos and so much content on it that we're not going to cover off it in too much detail right here. Um, we're going to put some links to some videos in the description below. I'm going to pop one up now and there'll be a playlist at the end. And I would suggest checking any of those out to see about going off grid. It's not just about running your compressor fridge. We can get it set up to run any of your household appliances while you're caravanning and you have the luxury of home. So we run things like a dishwasher, an air conditioning unit, a um, thermo mix, a te kettle, toaster, hair dryer, hair straightener, CPAP machine. There are so many things that you can be running off grid. And as I said, it's just a wealth of information. So we're not gonna chuck it in here now, but go and check out one of our other videos to learn all about it. So Barani, we'll do some questions now. What's the one thing you couldn't live without camping? Yeah, I guess it's the people that you go camping with. It's the fires that you get to have off grid. Um, it's the, I don't know, the people. How about you, Andrew? Coffee. Even though we set up a lot of coffee machines, I'm an AeroPress guy, but something that'll boil my water quickly in the morning is probably a must for me. So there's some of our top tips and some of my rants. Um, we really hope to see you out there because this country is amazing and yeah, Australia's what's camping all about. And we really are the leaders in this touring market in the world. So good on you, Australia, and get on out there. Totally. If you've got any questions, as always, drop them in the comments below. The team and Andrew are always happy to answer them. Have a good one.